Well, here we are, boys and few gals, back with another set of JoJo videos. This time you'll be getting three sins and three wins videos covering all 39 episodes, 13 apiece. Thank you to everyone who joined my Patreon expressly to get part four voted in by an insane 22 votes to the nearest other anime, which had just two votes. You're amazing. I do this for you. And please be sure to leave a like and a comment and maybe help out on Patreon since YouTube pays me diddly squat on both channels for JoJo videos. And now let's get into it. Right off the bat, immediately I'm hit with what looks like a really different art style to the previous parts and I ain't hating it. This beautiful twisting panning shot is so Jojo it physically hurts me. I mean it doesn't, but I think it's great. Plot twist! Not CGI! Jotaro! Sinewy shots that almost always score a fantastic win! I do believe these styles of introductions may be new and I like it. God, I love his character, his voice actor, and his stando! The style change, it looks really good. I'm incredibly impressed thus far. At least he cares about the poor turtle. Seriously, that style! You know it was coming. Another unique standoff! Whoa, this really is unique, and the turtle got better too, and I knew Jojo wouldn't let me down, so take two wins, damn it. God, I'm happy I'm making these videos. Joseph Oh my god, he's still okay. You guys have no idea how long I've been waiting to find that out. I've been patient though, and kept away from spoilers, and I'm so happy right now. Just putting out there into the world that I like this new character. He fixed up the turtle, and he seems like a really cool dude with a really cool voice actor. Very cool. This rotating view. Why can't other anime do stuff like this, man? Oh my god, is he stopping time? And some things never change. Erin plus Todoroki. Joseph Nicely setting up the story and doing so by including old man Jojo's stand abilities is a great touch. <laughs> Whoa! Jesus, this got dark. Here I am about to praise the introduction of this villain in this cool new star, and they show him running up to some guy aged 12 and hitting him with a baseball bat to the face, and then I want monetization on this video, so let's just say being the worst human alive to the guy's girlfriend. Man, I love when Jojo can so randomly go from being lighthearted to incredibly dark so quickly. They don't even use CGI in a distant shot like this! This was an event which took place during the episode! Another unique stand order! This may be one of the worst villains in the entire anime. Blah. Hmm? 
In terms of a stylistic change, I absolutely have to shout out the narration and scene transitioning as we hear Jotaro speak about this See You next Tuesday and then move straight back into the actively flowing and progressing scene. That's so impressive to up and change the style like that and to do it so successfully, no less. Okay, I can't show just anything that just happened. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going out on the limb and saying this. This is my personal favourite OP so far out of all of them. Really awesome and super catchy tune. I loved that a lot. And the style change was extremely noticeable and the dance moves and everything else. <laughs> the dark music change and finding a way to link his past to the families. Keeping with the times by having him play with an N64. Now that was clever! <laughs> this entire interaction, the CGI effect on the bottom of the stand, and the amazingly intense action themed music. Kicking off this second episode with a very genuinely sad moment for his grandfather's passing. Ah, oh, this... and the music... it's killing me! Then they go ahead and really drive it home by talking about the guy's wardrobe. I mean, it sounds lame when I say it, but yeah, it's emotional as hell! Gotta say, I'm liking this personality, where he's super calm and suddenly really loses it. Um, that. Weather effects in anime, much like in video games, seems to be getting better and better all the time. Josuke! Oh god, yes. Angelo it wouldn't be Jojo if it wasn't full of seemingly inescapable scenarios. Loving getting to see Star Platinum back in action, and Yosuke's stand also has a great attacking sound. Yeah, I can get all the way on board with that. The E.T. is one of the strangest I've ever seen. I'm in awe. Absolutely in awe. It's beautiful and had a fantastic song. I'm in love with it. All for one. First person perspective. In terms of a powerful ability for an enemy to have, they just managed to take it next level. Wait, Dio? The car driving away, hand drawn, the reflection in the mirror, also hand drawn, and then changing to a reflection of himself. That's beautiful. N -n 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 another unique standor. Knuckle. That's a really nice touch using what sounds to me like the same sound effect used when Vanilla Ice erased things with his stand. Tells me a great deal about his character that he'd take damage in order to save this enemy from being killed. And this tells me just about everything else I needed to know. I like this dude a lot. He kind of reminds me of Joseph when he was young. God, I hope he joins the crew full time. I love the voice actor. In case you didn't know what Win53 was for when I said Knuckle, that's the character he voiced in Hunter x Hunter. Such a nice guy in that animal lover too like me. Oh, 
Cool, you got? He's so joining the crew. Knuckles joining the crew. What? I always say it as a joke, but also mixed in with it being a genuine win. But let's be honest, this really is another unique stand. It's friggin' toy soldiers. Yep, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Get out of here with that. Another excellent stand -up. Oh god. In my eyes, they're very much making it look like battles are being taken to a whole other level. I'm just loving the entire vibe of them thus far. Can't get over how awesome it is that they frequently change the colour styles. It used to mean nothing to me, but now I'm more like, HA! Look, his hair's now white instead of blonde! Look at this! Goddamn dust particles! Because the sun is shining through and the wall is broken too! Yup, didn't see that coming at all. I can never figure out these battles. Must admit, I'm liking Baby Aaron and what he brings to their currently two man group. What the bloody hell? Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> Fleshed out backstories about pretty much everyone is so bread and butter for Jojo. I can't show it, but the anime absolutely deserves a win for him saving his younger brother even after the threat of killing him if he didn't stand down. This. I literally, and I do mean literally, said this in Japanese right before him. Just gonna be honest and tell you all I've got a huge smile on my face right now. Yay, he's joining the crew, my boy Knuckle! Another unique but incredibly odd standoff. Like, really weird, isn't it? His healing ability just comes in handy like all the time. What a great stand. This glorious looking edit, like it came right out of Love is War or something. Eren Chan increased his coolness level by 100%. Now he's got a stand, pretty much the same way Mob does when he uses his power seriously in Mob Psycho 100. Just when I think I've seen all of the weirdest and wildest stands they could ever be, they go and have baby Aaron chance be like this, and it's so bizarre. Pun intended. And just like that, when I'm utterly clueless as to how he can win, he goes and pulls that out of his hat like he's been using his stands for years. He's clearly a fast learner. <laughs> yeah, I officially like this kid a lot. Can't show it, but he jams the damn pen into his eye. What the hell? I'm not even mad that he's joined his crew when we get moments like these.
I think stands are so very varied in abilities in JoJo that there's basically no end to them, which is obviously great for a series which runs as long as this one has. Actually having an enemy openly acknowledge this is an incredible way of cementing not only Dio's power in the universe but also Jotaro's. Many times anime can have someone super strong and then they'll just replace them in the next season to up the game, much like Dragon Ball Super to be honest. And the way they handled Star Platinum's power and abilities is like a homage to his character's strength. Eren Chan saving his buddy, and believe it or not, but I actually guessed it correctly for once. <laughs> Super nice touch having him kick him when he gets up, and we hear the wood effect of the doll. <laughs> That is so damn cool! Multiple moving characters on screen! That's so clever! This is even more clever! It's just so insanely clever! I love the mangaka for coming up with all of this genius storytelling, dude! And now coming together is one of my favourite parts of Jojo as an anime, is the crew element, everyone interacting and reacting to one another, the dynamic is always expertly crafted through extensive character development. Oh my god! It's a hair attacking related stand. See what I mean by seemingly infinite options in the future? But hell, if they keep backing it up with interesting characters using those stands inside a larger, even more interesting overall story, then I'm game for the long run. <laughs> These two real bros helping out their other bro warms my damn heart. <laughs> Oh dear lord, even I wouldn't be able to put up with this! God damn, Eren's voice actor is capable of so much impressive range! Now that was a very clever use of his stand's abilities! It is increasingly awesome to see how he fights someone with his set of skills and abilities, especially given that the last season essentially had all of the main heroes fighting with attack related stands. <laughs> this absolutely wouldn't be Jojo if a character wasn't narrating exactly what's happening on screen. Gotta give mad props to the voice actress for this chick. She's done a stunningly great job with this crazy woman. Him saving her life despite everything she put him through is another great way to tell us just about everything we need to know about his character. <laughs> This ending, and in case you can't recall, it's because she tortured him when he got the answers wrong. Water drinking enjoyment! I like how they gave this guy an obviously wonky Japanese voice since he's Italian. I wish I could have shown the actual teeth scene, but goodness me, that was crazy. First person perspective plus the added dark filter just really adds to the creepy tension. It's pretty damn rare for an art style change in JoJo, but I like this a lot. That's a fantastic bait and switch of an episode, all based on a genuinely nice dude helping people with his stand's abilities. 
ジョセフ・ジョースターよりカチッ俺は一度決めたことをやり遂げられなかった男としてやめないとどんどん蹴りが強くなるです<笑>あの始末してやった警長の弟の The effects used on the stand are amazing! It's really bright! スタンドのレッドホットチリペッパーのこと<笑>現れたのか。Seeing the effect this news had on his friend given the death of his brother is a great reminder to us, the viewer, of what the coming battle means to him. 確かに足腰は弱くなって杖をついているな。I actually can't take this build up to seeing them again. They're playing with me. They're toying with my feelings like they don't even care. <laughs> By the way, I just want to make this clear. This is a good twist, okay? But for once, I genuinely figured it out when I first saw the bike that he was inside the bike, and I'm so proud right now, even though it was likely obvious to all of you. At first, I was poised to add a sin on anime sins, but now knowing that he's able to attack this freely at distance, I definitely have no need to. Okay, gotta hand it to them yet again. I thought all about the cables above them. Didn't occur to me about the ones under the ground, though. Well played, Jojo. This is great news, but I did tackle this moment on Anime Sins, so maybe check that out if you're interested in fat memes in general, but also a breakdown of this event. <laughs> Such a nice added touch to have him actually looking at his hand in the background at the same time. So good to see him. <laughs> Whoa, gonna say this a different way, so be prepared. A unique stand user. Not much to say, but this is pretty cool. Man, that's so clever, and I'm so glad he switched on enough to his boy's thought pattern that he could figure this out without any help. My word, those sound effects are awesome. I think they really stepped it up in part four. Oh, oh, I already know this is extra clever because rubber and electricity don't mix. Thank you, E-Grade in Science. An epic end to this fantastic battle. God, I love how he's really trying his best to understand the situation, but given his limited IQ, he's kind of struggling to make a decision. I absolutely cannot not give a win for this. This is sad to see. Well, literally all of us understand why, and that's the main thing. Showing us flashback scenes to give us some closure. Oh, I remember years ago when he said Japanese coffee was terrible, but then he found out he was drinking American. At least I think that was the scene. It's more incredibly sad, but yeah. I know Yusuke is foolishly not taking him seriously, but seeing him like this, alerting to danger just like the old days, absolutely warms my heart. And it hurts even more knowing his time in this universe is coming to an end and I can feel it. Oh my god! Oh my 
god, he said, oh my god! Oh my god, he used Herbert to purple! Okay, I can die happily now. This entire scene. Foundation Oh, and by the way, the whole notion of him caring for a baby in front of his young son isn't lost on me. It's very sweet, actually. This is so incredibly clever, and animating around this stand must have been a nightmare. This is so clever! That scene with that music playing and it being Joseph, goddamn. Take two wins. The continuous effort to make the environments feel real. Such a talented voice actor. Gotta state that again. This transition is incredibly JoJo. Once again, using tech from the era. なるほど。この雲がおにぐもか。日本全土の人家から産地までブンプしていて。あ、Google、this is it true. Oh wow, Yet another original standoff! Super nice touch having his eyes be deep because it's the surface of the book. At first, I thought this dude's stand seemed fairly useless, but as is always the case, it's seemingly quite powerful with his built in abilities. Whoa, they're actually throwing a few art style changes at us this episode. An extreme variety. And by the way, when I'm talking about art style changes, I'm referring to the kind of stuff we see in Mob Psycho 100, and not when they change the color palette in JoJo, for example. Okay, so I'm just going to throw down two wins for all of the references we'll be seeing to real life in these stands' names throughout. Enjoying the fact that an evil kid like this can be so easily exposed with a stand like his. I just gotta shout these two changes out. Jesus! This has to be the work of an enemy stand user! These two posing in classic JoJo style poses and coming to the rescue of their boy yet again! These sick ass transitions! My god, they spend no damn expense and time and effort to make each episode look as glorious as humanly possible, do they? Once again, it absolutely wouldn't be a JoJo episode if someone wasn't outright narrating out loud what's happening in front of them. Second OP of the season, people! This is not a drill! So straight away, I like the style and it's 10 billion percent better because it's got Joseph in it. I also freaking love this moment with everyone together. Like I said in part one, the crew element is one of my favourite things about Jojo every time. The song isn't my particular jam, but you absolutely cannot deny the unbelievably smooth as butter style of animation and gorgeous editing. Completely stunning. Super nice touch having him go check the window. They could have more than easily just had a still image of them at the door and save time. Oh, now that's beautiful. This happens in this episode. Oh, wow, he actually came back and saw through the ruse. 
こいつのスタンドの正体を教えろそそれが This is cool. It was actually something I was thinking about earlier on and thought might be a plot hole, but I'm really glad they didn't make any mistake. Once again, this whole stand's power must have been difficult for them to animate. Massive props, as always, to the amazing team. <laughs> This? I don't understand what's happening right now, but I like it a lot! The fact that his love of his precious and consequently awesome hair won him that battle. Dude, they linked it to Stardust Crusaders! Man, I love that music so much. Makes any scene instantly incredibly emotional. Giving him a genuinely great reason to be so protective over the hairstyle. I googled it, this is also very true! <laughs> very ill! So much elegance and style in part 4. Wow! <laughs> Just like in Stardust Crusaders, I really enjoy the notion of having some animal stand users. <laughs> really glad they took a moment to show him attempting to gain Jotaro's attention. <laughs> That? It's completely awesome getting to see these two take on the stand user. Oh my god, he used the world though! Oh, now this is just one of the most incredible freaking things I've ever seen in JoJo. Dear Lord, I don't like seeing Jotaro get hurt, but he's such a badass, even when injured, issuing orders to keep Josuke on task and doing so while sounding exactly like Owen from Attack on Titan is a mega bonus. It's great how they're also demonstrating both the incredible power of the world and also how it even still has limitations against a stand user with a ranged ability. <laughs> Josuke ending this battle in such an epic fashion. <laughs> There's always so many cheaper, less aggravating, less time-consuming ways they could adapt to this anime. But time and again they prove to be so dedicated, and thus we get moments like these. Seriously, such an amazing company. Look at it! Look at it! Even though he was a nasty dude, I'm forever pretty okay with bad guys joining the good guys team, even if it's just for a short while as it's very interesting to see how dynamics mix, as well as stands working together potentially. Getting to see what his stand actually looks like. Also for him being so quick to attack someone, which let's be honest is quite rare in Jojo. <laughs> to his absolute credit, he really tried to literally save him just now. This bait and switch seems to be something part 4 is employing quite a lot and to fantastically great effect again and again. We're so used to the Stardust Crusaders and earlier Jojo whereby every person is an enemy, at least the vast majority of the time. But here already on episode 17 we've seen the Italian cook who was just a cook and now this girl who is seemingly just a friendly ghost and I adore that. <laughs> Oh 
全員とは言わないけどひっそりと殺されている。Linking this into the newspaper articles that baby Aaron Chan read in a much earlier episode is genius. 怖いわ。そしてとても誇りが傷つくわ。犯人が捕まった。This beautiful and trippy effect is wild! <笑>何かいる頭のすぐ後ろに。Ah, this is unexpectedly intense! Yay, he saved him! This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. It was his unique stand, his poise, and character that saved the day. So he was very lucky to be there with him in the end. Well, that just made me damn sad. Oh my god, that's made me damn sad. I've definitely seen this guy before on YouTube thumbnails and stuff, so I'm guessing this is the main bad dude, and I can't wait to see more of this. A stand user! This! Fat. Good use of CGI. A third bait and switch. I can already tell this kid and his understanding of things is going to lead to some hilarious stuff going down. Josuke continues to rise in my estimations all the time. Everyone's reactions to Harvest doing its thing. This is such a weird episode, but gosh, do I love seeing their reactions to all of this. <laughs> they really use filters and additional effects to great effect, I guess, in this season. Oh, oh, color palette change, everything's yellow! Wow, this quick thinking! I didn't think I could find such odd episodes that haven't much to do with the main story this interesting! Yes, absolutely deserved. Okay, I was enjoying this episode already, but now it's way more interesting. This is so clever and awesome looking. Crazy Diamond. Oh wow, this is actually a thing! This epic ass turnaround! Kawaii! I must admit, I'm really enjoying how they're consistently bringing back former enemies into this anime. I think this is like the fourth time now, whereas obviously, and for good reason, Stardust Crusaders the majority of the time had the heroes defeat their foes and move on, other than Whole Horse! A new stand <laughs> this attitude. <laughs> well, I can't show pretty much anything happening right now, but it's pretty okay. <laughs> Yay, Joseph is back! I've only had to wait ages to see him again! <laughs> Love the lads all willing to help one another out. This shocking reveal and also the awesome panning shots. Anata no 
The music, the entire scene, his statement of being willing to lose his sight if he chooses the wrong face because he's now in love with her. That's some super intense stuff and I love it! <laughs> I guess once again this absolutely counts as a bait and switch of sorts. She's not a bad woman, she's definitely got odd methods, but she's not an enemy. The fact that this dude is so casual about the whole severed hand thing makes for a pretty cool villain introduction. This guy is freaking weird! This music fits insanely well. How they've worked these characters' paths crossing so well. This entire scene with its multiple changing perspectives, intense music and sound effects and how good of a job they're doing pushing this dude as a villain. Okay, so I'm positive he's going to make it away with the hand before it's seen, but goodness me if they aren't working super diligently to make me think otherwise. Also, I've got to say I'm enjoying the bad guy actually being forced to sneak around and almost get caught by the heroes. Oh, I also got a shout out of this dude's tune. It's really cool. Fits his character's vibe perfectly so far. Noka. That's cool! This dude also did the voice for Dante from Devil May Cry, which I literally just got finished sinning. He's got a great voice for both characters, to be honest. Oh god, he also voiced the original Griffith in Berserk! Oh come on now, take another win for that! That's insane! I freaking love that anime! Mmm, this guy looks really powerful! Gotta be careful how much I show you, but oh my god. Also, Unique Stand is incredibly unique. Great design on it as well. Oh my god, this is so intense. He actually managed to make an escape attempt. This is insane! <laughs> Just chucking out wins now. Once again, they use this damn music and his speech is so damn heartfelt in his love for his parents and wanting to protect them. And the way he describes it so simplistically is beautiful. There's really something emotional about someone being desperately in need but unable to find assistance in times like these. I don't know what it is, but it makes it so much worse, having help just be fleeting when you need it most, and it's just out of reach. Okay, I really thought he was going to make it. Man, that's so damn sad. I know he was irritating in his greed and that, but ultimately he was a kid who wanted to protect his parents from this monster he came across, and then failed at the very end, and that's worth a heavy win. Right at the end, he still managed to spend his last remaining power to do this. Everyone turning up for this moment at this point in time. Jotaro being intelligent. His own way of showing his feelings about the loss of his friend. I adore how they've brought these two into the mix, even if it's just for a short time. It's a real first for a season of JoJo, as far as I can tell. And there it is, the official death notification. Been a long time since we've had one. Also, man, they do such a great job of building the villain's character through scenes like these. Scenery shot.
By the way, this is one such scene I was referring to. Uh, we see a strangely affectionate side to him for these extremities. Pretty cool how his wardrobe has slightly changed. Can't ever recall that happening in Stardust. Jujuro is always so cool! Really enjoying seeing these two interact with each other one on one. Haven't seen that yet. Wow, it's our first proper oh from this season! Double wow! This one definitely put the first one to shame and he used the world at the same time! Oh, I'm so finding this particular soundtrack right now and commenting under it. Your boy is here as always. <laughs> Having the enemy possess a stand power this strong and unique. This is so awesome! Dear Lord, this is like the worst stand ever! It's still coming! Eren Baby Chan regaining his confidence and his badass confidence related look as well! Yup, I called it. Pretty much what I came up with. I think I'm getting better at this slowly. Josuke is saying what everyone is desperately shouting. Oh, this all day. Erin Chan growing as a character and the fact that stands continue to grow in this part four. Genuinely so great to see this guy struggling now against a stand. <laughs> Can't show it, but his money bonged his fingers off! Consistently learning more about his character is pretty new for Jojo, as usually the villains are pretty simplistic, other than Dio, of course, who we followed for so long. I like how they're making it so this stand can speak back to him. I can't recall, but I think that may also potentially be a first, no? I had no idea I could enjoy this so damn much, but here they are face to face and I can't control my excitement! And super casually, they yet again reveal more information about him and that he is clearly OCD like me! How they beautifully timed his mannerisms and what he was saying with his sudden attack and that amazing music. <laughs> Man, this guy is insanely awful, but seriously, what a great damn villain, am I right? <laughs> Him being sneaky and learning his name and his reaction to it is yet again so telling of his character in that he values his privacy an insanely high amount. Him showing so much courage in the face of such evil and danger. Another great example showcasing his OCD. I 
can't even take this anymore. I don't even know what to do with myself. Jotaro is still okay and he's up and about and he saved him. <laughs> Jotaro still is tough as titanium nails and again, I love how his stand and himself are treated by the story at large with so much respect. Yes! Yes! I'm so glad this was picked up on so quickly. How could any normal student heal him up? This is outstanding. Right now, guys and gals, I am so, so happy that Jotaro is okay. I'm actually as happy right now as I was during Stardust Crusaders when Joseph was brought back by Jotaro. I love feeling this way. It makes me feel so connected to the characters. I thought the last thing was clever and then he did this thing and now I'm just in utter adoration of Josuke and his awesome brain. But the very end to this absolutely incredible episode and the notion that the villain has now changed his face and is once again completely unknown to the crew. Getting this first look at what the newly faced Kira is up to. Well, that's completely grossed me out. Thanks for that, Jojo. <laughs> Classic, because just like that, a pretty chilled out scene gets turned all the way up on the old intensity meter. This beauty of a panic shot. <laughs> Ha! I was just about to send them for not hearing all of the commotion and here they go wandering in. Well played. I don't know what's going on but I like it a lot. Okay, I didn't see the solution coming 100 miles off and I'm confidently guessing none of you did as well. Did you? <laughs> I swear Jojo just gets weirder and weirder, but honestly that's what keeps it so endlessly entertaining. Or at least one of the many things I should say. <laughs> This... This is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure! It's so good! Oh, actually, yeah! This now makes a ton of sense! Wow, I'm glad they put that out there into the lore! Another great scene review! Getting to see even more of what Kira is doing! This is wild! <laughs> the cat's instant reaction to the intruder! Even though I hate this dude, I don't half love seeing stand users pull one over on non-stand users. And now we continue to see the varied mix of characters interacting with each other expand as my man Joseph seems to briefly at least team up with Manga Boy. I adore this aspect of his personality. This is now twice that he's immediately attacked first before asking questions. No idea who this kid is and he's obviously a stand user or going to be soon, but he's very much injecting a lot of humor as we roll into this final episode of part two. <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. Another original sitor! Seriously, he does think very quickly on his feet, once again acted fast to win the battle, and he gets major props for that, because most anime just don't have characters acting this way. <laughs> this is a nice touch because I noticed he was there in the background a couple of minutes ago before they revealed it. 
how they edit this into an epic looking matchup when it's actually rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> what the hell? I don't even know, but what the hell? I love it. He won. <laughs> Manga style. And once again, we're shown how a stand user can come around to the good guy's way of living. Or at least I hope that's what happens, but sadly I now have to wait a couple of weeks before I can start the third and final part. I'll also drop another win for how he won the battle with his own changing character and subsequent luck, and how fantastic the entire scene looked. This dude is different, and he's also a straight up elf out of the Lord of the Rings, and I dig that in many ways. Also another win for the deceiving appearance. This dude looked hardcore, and then when he gets hurt, he comes out with a sweetheart voice and reaction like that. Ita. Dudes, it's a new OP, and to be quite frank, I'm terrified I'm gonna miss something and get yelled at, so very gingerly, I'll say it's as always got sick ass visuals and an awesome song which nicely fits the theme and year the anime is set in. But then when we get to this point, I think it's really nice they showcase to us the now deceased stand users we've met along the way, plus the ghost girl and ghosty dog. Did I do good? <laughs> Firstly, for keeping me ever curious about his character, since we see his nails grow incredibly quickly, but aren't sure exactly why just yet. Secondly, because once again I have to shout out how awesome of a villain this guy is and how psyched I am again that it's Griffa from the original Berserk voicing him. He's got such a great voice. Oh, and just an interesting fact, but Rohan is actually voiced by the guy who is now doing the voice of Griffa in Berserk. <laughs> Whoa, hold the phone and push back my 11 o'clock because color me intrigued. I love his character so much. Oh, bless you, Knuckle, for being in this. What the hell? Did they just take this into Galactic? Gotta say, I love this view where it shows off all of their faces at the same time, albeit it's a little confusing to my brain. Their reaction. Oh my god, I think they've gone into Galactic! Goddamn, I love this new character already. He's so interesting. Like, for real, the most interesting side character so far, and this season is full of them in my eyes. This is just straight up insane. We've never seen anything like this before. Then again, Cars was out of this world. <laughs> no, but seriously, he's unique as hell. This guy's hilarious. In the past, I'd have wrongly sinned this moment, but thank goodness I now know about stand talking. Well, this is just absolutely outstanding. Josuke's test is actually super clever. Outfit number two! I love that they're doing this in part four! I must say, whenever Jojo takes a rare breather, it's always just as interesting to me as the usual episodes. They did this sometimes in Stardust Crusaders between stand battles, and I always loved it, and I still do here. Ever since Konosuba, I've always found it funny when characters in anime speak over one another. His face is a nervous work of art! Oh my god! 
This guy is back and he's all healthy! This just got incredibly and unexpectedly intense! This transition! Oh dear lord, this is unexpectedly insanely intense times two! I can't even take this anymore! Get out of here with all of this! Not gonna lie, that's a little bit creepy, but color be intrigued indeed. あんたまさかまた自分が宇宙人だとか言って人様からかってるんじゃないでしょうね。彼女は僕が洗脳して息子だと思い込ましているんです。Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not gonna lie. Even though it's so much tougher, they hand animate the bus like a bunch of legends. You know, I haven't done it before, so I should really shout out these landmark moments. They've done eight now, and I didn't really think about them, but they really do add to world building in much the same way as the ad breaks do in Attack on Titan. Not only is this clever because it, at least temporarily, gives them time to investigate this alone, but also it aids in character building, since most character building is usually based upon getting over the bad times together. Yep. I'm out. ロハンの野郎に二度と会いたくねえと言ったばかしだけどよ。See, I knew he'd come back and help out. This is what I was talking about in terms of overcoming adversity and all this grow together. This comment made me remove a sin on anime sins. You guys know it's coming. Come on now, say it with me in the comments. Three, two, one, another unique stun door! Well, the first of part three. Nice! Love this little added effect showing his bones and veins and stuff. They straight up kill it with these moments in terms of building intensity and excitement and the music, my word, Jojo has some of the best tunes. That's my boy Josuke and also they changed the colour palette and I like it a lot. Oh my god! Dude, tell me that didn't just sound like the guy from the SCP game that follows you forever once he locks onto you. Man, imagine if that was Loki inspired by the manga back in the day. <laughs> This absolutely incredible frickin' moment! The most natural way to answer a phone! Classic Jojo first person perspective! How are they making this so intense non-stop? <laughs> that! <laughs> Showing his bike on the hospital lawn for some reason. Okay, master. Let's kill the hole. Oh, there's no way that's not getting the win. Finally seeing that dude, and quite frankly, these ladies. Yeah, alright, by now you all know about me, you know I didn't have a clue how it'd get out of that one, didn't you? Didn't you? Did you get it though? <laughs> I don't know, tell me, did you? Healing him up in order to beat the hell out of him and what a fantastic end to this part of the story. This view. 
ちなみに広瀬光一はあの後犬の散歩に行った For the entire end of this episode including the important information about dog walking God I love this anime so much あそうだ敵じゃないって教えて安心させればいいのだわほら This woman is crazy いやきっとそうではなかったのだな Between the rain and the lightning, Jojo is once again cracking out some awesome looking weather effects. Well, this is different and really weird. Hilarious cat thoughts and an excellent narration, including the addition of inner monologue meows. How they made it look like a cat's body is an amazing attention to detail, especially since a lot of people might not even notice it here. This might actually be a first, potentially, whereby we get to witness an enemy, the main villain, in fact, take on an unrelated foe to the main group, and I like that. Well, that's new. Character growth? For the main villain of the story? This is true, but you know, don't do it. Thinking of this distraction. For the last time of part four, it really wouldn't be Jojo without someone narrating out loud what's happening right in front of them. <sighs> the kid whom I previously thought was a girl acting quick and covering his tracks like a smart little dude. Joseph, and yes, him being back in it again is a win. Even though it's without a doubt more hassle, they show the clouds passing through the holes on the photo's edge. This guy returning since he's very cool and him randomly getting bashful at their comments. That is so bizarre and no pun intended and I love it. I must give it up to them for the level of detail on that pylon, it's insane. Super enjoying how they're featuring multiple characters experiencing multiple different events in different areas. Don't think they've done that before now. To say that I'm intrigued by the fact that they've run into multiple new people and that they just keep cutting away to another event before I can find out what's happening would be a gross understatement. <laughs> Dear Lord, stop cutting away and tell me what's going on! Terminator! A new and amazingly unique standard! Okay, this is brilliant. Not only did I forget about him being there, but then his rescue and how he did it so calmly and everything. And I love this dude, he's amazing and he's an alien. Did you know that? So outrageously cool! Another win for the end of this amazing episode. He's attacking first again. It's his style. It's so original for an anime. I love it. It gets a win every damn time. That he was smart enough to write this in after what happened with the kid is seriously, and I do mean seriously great writing, because that'd be something I'd have mentioned right away on the other channel. Bless the Mungaku's heart for real. This guy is just amazing. What an amazing personality and character. As great a hero as the elf alien is, this guy is also original in my mind, since he's clearly been trying to actually not kill these guys. In fact, he even specifically mentioned healing herbs in the nearby garden to heal their wounds, and that's definitely unique for an enemy in this anime. Can't show it, but Josuke winning this battle in epic style! 
けないでしょうかもう一生ここから出たくないです This change of character, yet again, totally unexpected in all honesty. Not sure why he's hanging out with him, but I'll assume it's a nice reason and I like that a whole lot. This! That! That now he's just desperate to see his back, and quite frankly, so am I now. This just got real, one unbelievably great last few episodes, they're just blowing me away with this one and the last two especially with their slow build up and look at that classic Jojo style pose right there! They can also take a win here for yet again having a former enemy team up with them for even a short amount of time, loving that this season! Yeah. This happens, and this enemy actually seems genuinely concerned for Josuke, which is wild. Again, absolutely cannot show it, but his back opened up and he seemingly died after his back was seen, and it's crazy, and what the hell is going on? Another stand so soon, oh my goodness! They didn't have to, but they went the extra mile and actually put pictures and writing on the paper he's flicking through. Further expanding the world by having another stand that operates of its own accord, although this one goes even further by being completely independent as it were. Kind of, anyway. The incredible art style change, which is a big part of this new stand's abilities. <laughs> Josuke is showing even more of his incredible character and his absolute resolve when it comes to his friends, and I like the reaction from the former biker gang member to this as well. I'm guessing it's perhaps a reaction based on maybe never having a friend who would go that far for him. <laughs> Dude, another bait and switch? Part 4 Jojo will forever go down in my mind as one of the greatest. Well, actually for me right now, all but the greatest, and a big part of that is seeing the ever-expanding crew. It's just impossible for it to feel stale because of stuff like this. Always great to see previously seemingly unbeatable enemy stands go up against new enemy stands. These effects after that masterful build up. It's all going so badly for the heroes, but Jesus, if this stand doesn't just look amazing in its abilities, and what an outstanding scene! Oh, this is just disgustingly amazingly great. Makes me sick to my stomach how awesome part 4 is. God damn. To three baby Aaron Chan three threes. <laughs> the end to this epic episode and battle. Human title of Kain to Oh wow, what a cruel but definitely fitting end. <laughs> I was actually thinking to myself that it'd feel a bit weird for him to have a redemption and join them in the future, so this was a great way to end his story. Ooh, never noticed the changes they made near the end of the ED in what was a previously blank tunnel in the very early episodes. Even though I feel it's extremely out of character to not believe him and this was represented on the Sins version, I do enjoy seeing him getting super fired up right now. Nice touch having these two in the scene after they showed up in Jotaro's paperwork during episode 33. <laughs> Using his stand in yet more ingenious ways to help him get through this insane situation. Oh, 
let's go. Well, at least he went and did that much. Still think it was out of character for both him and the accusation against Rohan, but yeah, glad he saved him here. Definitely can't show it, but his back was coming apart and ill and everything. Oh my god, I forgot about this! That was brilliant! Seeing her and Sir Balzenstein again! Once again, can't show it, but his epic music thing was perfectly timed beforehand and then he exploded the dude! This amazing turn of events as his fake life is finally starting to catch up to him. This! Check out the shadow, nice touch. Extremely careful what I'm showing, not sure why they had a fully naked scene, but a great scene all the same, just... Just wish several towels were involved. Huh? Having her actively participate in finding her killer was a great idea. <sighs> oh man, no way. No way is he gone. Something's up. Color me intrigued, boys. <laughs> this is different. I genuinely haven't a single clue what's happening right now, but rest assured I'm loving every minute of it. In fact, this is probably a good time to tell you I've made my way through both scripts in just two days. I found loads of time to watch it, and whenever I'm truly enjoying what I'm writing about, I get it done quick and hopefully to a high quality. Once again, I want to thank all of you so much for watching and supporting these videos. It means the world to me seeing your kind comments and such. As always, if you want to ensure Golden Wind gets made, I could use all of the Patreon support in the world right now since I've lost several large donors in the last couple of months. So if you have any spare funds and would hate to see anime wins go away, please consider pledging. And now, let's get back to episode 35. <laughs> Epic hairstyle change! What happened? <laughs> Definitely dropping a win for his newfound confidence, even happily spouting his old name to the boy. Kimi, Kawajiri Hayato kun. Huh? Another new outfit, dude, that's unheard of. Also, for the team finally meeting up with this boy at long last. I definitely don't get it, but I most definitely do love it. Rohan putting it all together. Oh my god. I I just can't take this anymore. What just happened? Is Rohan okay? God damn, and how they played out what was maybe but hopefully not his final moments was yet another work of art. That view. Dude, so much a great season, and now his strange ability is starting to make a lot more sense. This is insane. How the hell are they going to be able to fight against a power like this? Even Jotaro doesn't have something this powerful, or I don't know. It's hard to quantify their time related abilities, really. Okay, I'm dropping two wins for the changing ED, as I'm deeply impressed by how many of the characters we've met are now a part of it, so big shout out to all of the changes as we near the end. I like how they included this element to him, in that he knows this stranger, this murderer is not his dad, and thus is now trying to keep his mother away from him. That was a good addition. Oh, that's just unreal. 
You lot must be so happy that I actually watched this OP and saw this change to the opening. Normally I skip them in order to crack on with writing, but people on my Discord warned me without spoilers to watch the last few episodes OPs for a change, so thanks very much to them. And if you'd like to join, you can use the clickable link in the description too. Actually, you know what? David Productions is so awesome and they change so much, they can go ahead and take a second extremely rare win for the OP. Oh god no, this is awful. I assumed he would now be safe. Seriously, having Jotaro being in the scene is starting to become a clear win in my eyes. He's so cool! I'm guessing this is maybe the death notification done in another form? Part 4 has become the master of all of Jojo in terms of expertly building genuine tension in his episodes. Not only is it backed up by one of the best musical scores of the entire anime, but it's now edited to a degree that I would consider next level as well. Jotaro is so amazing. He's slowly figuring out this puzzle as well. I adore how stoic he is, just watching and towering over the crew, observing silently. He's amazing and quickly becoming a favourite of mine. Their reaction to seeing the enemy stand and now this, what the heck happens now? Obviously, there's no way in hell they're all dead, I can confidently say that, but all the same, it's an epic scene as we're forced to watch our heroes be killed, and now this amazing sad music plays the boot. Alright kid, I'm on board, now let's go do this. I really enjoy stuff like Groundhog Day, where the day is repeating over and over again, also like Edge of Tomorrow, so I dig this. Once again, this tension build-up is absolutely insane. I don't even anymore. How can they win? I don't know. I can't figure it out. It's all too much for my head and it hurts, but I'm captivated beyond belief and must begin episode 37 right away. This kid figuring out how to do this! Rohan being saved! Yes, that made me so damn sad before! It's an extreme rarity in previous seasons of JoJo, but actually seeing multiple main characters take on an enemy together is awesome to see. In all honesty, it kind of bugged me in Stardust how they'd stand around waiting for someone else to finish fighting. This had better not be the end of Knuckle, that's all I can say. I'm gonna need Josuke to go right on ahead and heal him up now. Thank god this kid is here and has been paying so much attention to his fake dad in the current situation. Oh, this moment. What a brave little kid to risk his life like that. Josuke, much like Jotaro, is seemingly a bloody tactical genius. Oh man, please tell me that it's not real and that he's not really dead, but it definitely seems that way right now. God damn. For the final time of this season, I'm giving one last win, one last time for the story praising Jotaro's incredible abilities and strength rather than just trying to look past him.
<laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Just messing around. God damn, just what I was afraid of. Man, that's so sad. He was my favourite side character in this season. <laughs> this terrible situation they find themselves in, and now with Josuke badly injured and his attack failed, the Mankaku continues to do his most excellent job of filling us full of worry and desperately trying to figure out how he's going to make it out of this. Oh my word, that's freaking amazing! <laughs> For some unknown reason, I genuinely thought he was burning a simple phone in his pocket. Naturally, I now feel so dumb as beyond belief. But anyway, that was great. Totally forgot about his nasty dad. Josuke is <laughs> That was unreal! Oh. <laughs> epic severely injured Jojo pose is incredibly epic! Dropping a first win here for this entire scene, I did think it would be really anticlimactic if it ended with the second piece of rubble through his back. <laughs> Secondly, for placing a bait and switch during the final battle involving yet another piece of the puzzle I've forgotten about is amazing. Are you kidding me right now? The fact that he's still alive! That is beyond beautiful. <laughs> Warping out dangerous Kitty Chan. Stardust Crusaders music, this is not a drill! This Jojo pose. Giving us a real time look at how effective his The World Range is. Okay, I pretty much held my breath that entire sequence waiting to see what would happen. Woohoo! Oh, I already figured out what's happening! This is unreal! He's dead! Whee! And for the end to this battle that I literally wished for just now before he even thought he had made it back one hour into the past. I wished and hoped that we would get an ending where in an awesome fashion we both got an epic finish to the battle and got to see such an amazing hero like Jotaro use his The World one more time to get the win and I have not been disappointed whatsoever. They can take an extremely rare two wins right here. Yara yara. Mani I cannot show the moment of impact, but this final amazing attack and the added extra yale yale and time has begun to move again. Such a nice touch. <laughs> you know what, boys and few gals? I like this end to him. It means none of them had to be murderers, as it were. Although I can't recall if Jotaro had actually killed someone or not in Stardust, I will admit. It's also kind of ironic that a man who thought fate was forever on his side got ran over by an ambulance coming to help him. 
別に仲良しじゃなかったけど僕のパパはあいつに殺された Genuinely great touch having this moment occur because his poor father was almost forgotten about glad they didn't make that mistake ひょっとしてこの場所振り向いてはいけないとかいう場所じゃないだろうな Man he's so annoyingly smart 私たちは15年あんたがここに来るのを待ってたのよタッチアーノルド Hey アーノルドこいつらをバカしろあっ、completely beautiful end to his horrible nasty character. An amazing character all the same, like the best villain so far in my eyes because of how fleshed out he was, but a truly great and fitting end. And hey, you know what? Take an extra win for the Mankaka having a dog be such an important part saving his owner's life in the afterlife. God, I love dogs so much. Makes me really sad, actually. <clears throat> For the last time, this gorgeous and painstakingly put together scenery shot. <laughs> Baby Aaron forcing some honesty out of him. Man, if that isn't evidence of lovely character growth, I don't know what is. Getting to see everyone from the story back together again. The mission finally completed. This is so emotional. So well done. Take two again. This final stunning and wonderful farewell. Okumo. And now they add this, which just attaches lovely onto what I mentioned in win number 528. They lost his father and she lost her husband. Now he has to process this, and it's just done so well. What an incredibly sad sentiment, and one that once again I'm so happy they're bringing up as it's really important in my eyes. I am so very, very happy that these two survived through to the end of this season. I really convinced myself that they would both die, so naturally I'm over the bloody moon. I also don't know how he came to be so with it again compared to when he first arrived in port, but I don't hate it one iota. Their amazing final goodbye to one another. That made me genuinely smile from ear to ear. In fact, I like to believe they maybe took him to the chef and his stand power maybe fix some bits and pieces in him. I don't know, just a nice theory maybe. Explaining what happened with the baby before the very end as I had wondered if they'd actually address what had happened with trying to find the mother and such. Jotaro is a doctor! <laughs> Seeing that these two are happy together after everything that had happened. <laughs> also for them keeping the plain cat, who now seems very happy. Everyone else's story is coming to a final close. Even after everything they went through in that tense battle, he still visits him and spends time with him so he's not alone. Final epic JoJo pose and the final epic moment of the anime.
Well, there you have it, guys and gals. I'm so happy I got to see that. I loved it so much. Once again, I'm really hoping to do Golden Wind. So please, if you can spare anything and you want to support the channel, it'd be great if you pledge whatever you can afford over on my Patreon, the link to which is down below. You can also find my Twitter down there and the link to our Discord. Thanks to each and every single one of you so much for watching. I partly make this series for myself, but I definitely do it mostly for you and your kind words and when I see how much you love the videos. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you in whatever comes next and hopefully in the near future in Golden Wind itself. See you next time. Nathan Burr, Bird Without a Word, Arias Alibari, Aiden White, PK Fan, Ali 50, Ryan Anderson, Isael Caldera, Armand Jasuja, Chris Harris, Yona Shal, Manolo Saucedo Munoz, Luis Hernandez, Joe W, Yuki Ali, Manuel Morales, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Sentimento, Jeffa 6263, Silver, Master Tank, Boogie, MD McVeigh, Aurora, Kevin Nauta, Stefio, Brendan Creo, Storm 970, Spirit Spinner, Mr. Waffle 64, Theodore Quackens, Kaj Borzelman, Jordan Samuels, Gabby Z, Amya Hamya, Crimson Shadows, Forian, Kyle Farmer, Buzzbomb 3000, Jeffa 6263,